Hey guys, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Aaron Chen. I am a project manager at Storage Guardian. With me on the call today is Omri Ferjan, the owner operator of Storage Guardian. Um, we also have Rena. Um, she is our marketing specialist, also on the call. So um, thanks for joining us. And this is our presentation on ransomware. Questions CEOs should be asking um, and should be prepared. So moving forward, uh, let me give you a little uh, background on Storage Guardian. Uh, Storage Guardian, we've been around for over two decades. Um, we believe that cloud should be easy, but uh, we also know that the devil is in the details. Uh, we have unique mechanisms that provides assessment of um, your security. Uh, we define your statement of work. Um, so that we can further better define your DR process. We are specialized in DR planning, drilling, fail, fail over, fail back, and scaling. And we provide 24 seven monitoring of RTO and RPO for our client. Um, over the last two decades, we always been um, up to push the envelope on more accountability in the cloud. We want to bring an accuracy of price point and usability, especially an autonomy to our client and our um, our partners. So let's talk disaster recovery. Um, disaster recovery used to be something that is infrequent. It's um, of course a process that responds to uh, recovering from an event that impedes your business operation. But these things are usually infrequent, right? So we're looking at your natural disaster, your infrastructure failure, something that happens once in a blue moon. What we're seeing recently, and especially with the pandemic, is that there has been a shift. Um, there are rises of malicious cybercrime. There are evolving malicious software, malware, ransomware. And now there are such things as ransomware as a service. Um, with no technical knowledge, what you can do is you can go into a gray site and buy attacks to attack your attack the people of your choosing. So all these things is becoming a apparent, uh, it's becoming apparent that ransomware is not just a disaster. It's a very highly likely one and we should be prepared. Here's a little bit um, of the current landscape. So we're looking at small businesses and medium-sized businesses that makes up 68% of cybersecurity attack. Because of the pandemic, remote work has increased the average cost of a data breach to $170,000 by IBM. Um, we estimate that a business will fall to a victim of ransomware attack every 11 seconds by 2025, and the worldwide information security market is forecast to be $170 billion in 2022. Now, because of this, we have an overwhelming offering of cybersecurity. There's a lot of noise. There's a lot of um, product that says, hey, this will stop ransomware, that will stop ransomware. But with all that noise, um, what we want to do is to bring to your attention what you need. And what you need often begins with a question, right? What would you like? What would you need? That starts with a question. And this is the question for the CEO. Um, what is the co cost of your outage? Who is affected? Can you log into your system or do you have an IT department? What system is critical when a disaster strike and what is their recovery time endpoint objective? How current does the backup need to be? Is the brand of the business going to be tarnished when it's down? And lastly, who is responsible for declaring a disaster? These are the questions for the CEOs because CEOs can answer, only CEOs can answer this question. These are not questions that any department or your IT um, people or your lawyers or your accountants can answer. Everyone will have different aspects. From a CEO's point of view, you know your business, they know their business. What the, are the answers to these questions? And from these questions, we can go in preparing a plan. Now, I'm going to um, pass this a little bit to Armory. Armory, do you have anything to add with this? Just that, I'll, thank you, Aaron. You did a great job. Just that, that a lot of those uh, points you made are valid. The extortionists that are running ransomware, they know the value of the business. There's common, uh, you know, understanding that they've 
you know, uh, they, they know the type of businesses they're going to be running ransomware attacks. And they know the, the, the amount of money you could afford to pay based on your brand, based on your reputation. And they know you want this to go away very quickly. Um, you know, as, as, as they say, a, a, um, a, an ounce of prevention could uh, potentially, you know, reduce the cost. Uh, and what, what, what we like to do at Storage Guardian is run validation drills. What we like to incorporate management, as Aaron said, C-level uh, management into discussion because ultimately they're the ones that know best the financial, the brand, you know, and, um, you know, and the, the extortionists know that um, if uh, one way of getting rid of this problem is just by paying out. The other way is, of course, by preparing for this moment uh, when really the CEO of the company should shine and say, this is what we've done as a business and, um, you know, and, and make the preparations up front. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not necessarily the managed service provider or the cloud. It really should be management. The problem with that, and, you know, we're, I'm not the only operator, I do believe in the divisional labor, is that, um, is that I, 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 I just don't have the credentials to log on to the VMware. We only have VMware authorized, you know, you know uh, certified engineers. Of course, we'll have to have a VMware individual do that. Um, it could be middle of the night, could be the vacation, could be their vacation. And so what we've done is we've enabled the C-level management with easy to use uh, technology that they're familiar with. Um, you know, at the time of a ransomware attack, and I've been through three ransomware attacks uh, since uh, the long weekend. One just happened um, just before this ransomware call. Uh, where um, we quickly organized and assembled an action plan to recover the data. Um, and, um, you know, easy to use technology includes interactive voice response, includes a text, includes a logging into a website, and uh, includes a, a, a disaster recovery runbook that each CEO should have um, at the moment of ransomware, and um, that's something that Storage Guardian has worked on and has built four small, mid-sized businesses uh, together from CEO down to help uh, make this a, uh, a cataclysmic attack uh, on your business work more like a minor uh, inconvenience. And that that's really uh, go, boils down to processes um, and checking the processes. So um, what we did is we realigned disaster recovery with today's technology and also the process that we have gained uh, through our experience. So best practice, we, we define roles and responsibility in our um, statement of work and responsibility matrix of which um, each step of the DR process from gathering requirements to declaring a disaster and fail over and fail back is listed. Um, we leave no room for doubt, everyone's responsibility. We build the framework in order to achieve the desired outcome. Um, our DR run book in which we'll be demoing in a short moment is low cost, is detailed, is a detailed disaster response plan. And uh, we are agile in spinning up the data and machines. So RTOs and RPOs are defined as very quick uh, in seconds, and we are able to spin that up because um, we create the process and the framework to do that. Um, last, last thing I want to uh, talk about is that we match the right technology with today's threats. Um, and like what Armory said, extortionist knows that you're unprepared and they're taking full advantage of the situation. They know that you're surprised by it. And the way to not be surprised by it is to have an ownership of your DR process. And only when that ownership is defined, we can tackle the problems with efficiency and accuracy. So event occurs. So let's do our demo. Event occurs. We assess the situation. We um, look at how we can recover from the situation. Then we resume normal operations and we review on our process. Now I'm going to show you a demo of how we do this. This is the big red phone. When something happens, you know there's a plan in place and we are going to essentially dial in the number. This is your um, disaster recovery runbook. 
uh, this run book will be created when you onboard your system onto the Storage Guardian um, DR continuity portal. And we have a table of content. So first, contact information, declaring a disaster, RTO, RPOs, um, and scope of the disaster recovery plan. But let's uh, go to the first step. Something has happened. Um, the primary contact person is Armory. And he is going to dial out using the voice IVR and his unique pen to declare his disaster. So, you know, in a large business, of course, there's going to be a whole call center and a hot room waiting for you pre-pandemic. What Storage Guardian has done is to make this a cost-effective solution is we've interacted, we've integrated into interactive voice response. And we've created a service board to uh, to manage the declaration. Press one for disaster recovery. Press two for DR testing, followed by the pound sign. It's sort of like ordering a pizza. Using the numbers on your phone, please enter your fave love or playbooks assigned pin number, followed by the pound sign. Your pin entry has started your DR testing of fast fade lover orchestration process. All individuals you have designated will be notified on the next steps. We will contact you back at this phone number as the recovery proceeds. 1416986827. Press 1 to confirm the number. Press 2 to change followed by hash key. Thank you. We will contact you shortly on your fast fade lover orchestration progress. So basically what we've built is a service board associated with a statement of work and all the individuals that have been part of the playbook to get a broadcast notification of the disaster recovery because the ransomware really uh, touches on numerous different teams, whether it's the managed service provider, the security team, uh, the uh, security operations center, uh, or even uh, a uh, insurance company, uh, utilizing the interactive voice response allows there to be a broadcast to all those uh, parties that are needed to assemble and you know help you out um, at the time when you really need them. At the same time, uh, when the disaster is declared. What I got, um, because I am on the second screen, so I am on as the uh, next person to call, alternate person to call. So what I received is I received this email from Storage Guardian. So it outlines that the process has been started. The enter of your the entry of your pin has started this process. So. Uh, we have up to four alternate person that will be contacted when this happens, and um, every single one of them will receive the email and they will see the text. Mm -hmm. Now, let's go into details of our DR plan. Um, we define the RTO and the RPO um, at the beginning when you're setting up your profile. Uh, we're monitoring that, and that will be displayed here on the RTO and RPO. On the server name, these are the servers that will be brought up when you declare a disaster. So you have their server name, application, OS, and IP source. Plan activation, what we discussed about previously uh, in terms of event occurs, assess, recover, resume, and review. And once again, we tell you in detail what machine is being spun up. And this is this is one of the most important things that is often overlooked in a DR process is that you are only as good as the machine you brought up on the cloud. So here we show you that first you're going to start with your main. Uh, your main is your Active Directory. It's going to be 10 minutes. Uh, it's going to start and it's going to wait for a duration of 10 minutes before the other things start recovering. So we can set our um, wait time. We can set the order of our machine. And um, we're going to go with Active Directory, DNS, Payroll, ERP, and then Email Exchange. These will be the machines that is brought up during a disaster recovery. 
Um, so when this this is why this is important to drill this at least once a year. We recommend once a year. Um, some of our client does it once every month, some of it once every quarter, um, some of it once every half a year. Um, the reason they do this is you always need to align what is going on in your current system, in your physical system, with what you need to bring up in terms of a disaster. And that's where this ease of use in terms of declaring disaster and looking at the sequences um, becomes very useful. Here we cover plan testing um, and we have um, mechanisms on our portal where you can add in values and you can um, document your testing. Okay, and then that will conclude our demo. Um, in 2021 and beyond, what we uh, have already done um, is this webinar, but please stay tuned with our emails and also on our website, because we are going to be talking about insurance integration with the DRM book. So very similar to what you see in the DRM book right now, uh, we are going to we're going to integrate cybersecurity insurance, cyber insurance protocols, and cyber insurance number um, into your runbook when so that you know who to call in terms of um, cybersecurity. We're also going to be doing a session on security information and event management integration and monitoring. So that's um, monitoring your logs to uh, ensure your client meet regulatory requirements in order to enable compliance um, and monitor key log files to identify and correlate events that might be malicious. Uh, we're going to talk about private cloud and how private cloud is becoming more affordable and the hidden cloud of public cost and the benefit um, of going into a private cloud in terms of savings and in terms of um, flexibility and scalability. And lastly, we're going to talk about endpoint protection and monitoring. Um, this is a partner that we're, we have with um, ConnectWise that will make um, a, that will correlate, be able to correlate security logs into a managed service. And that is it on the webinar. Um, I'm very happy that you guys can all attend. Um, if there are any questions, uh, the floor is open. Uh, so Rina, did you unmute all the attendants so if they have questions they can they can ask us if not i have some um questions that frequently ask questions uh with regards to uh the dr process um yeah so all the attendants are unmuted now okay so some one of the questions we have um that is very frequent is how fast can you um import my data what i have currently um, on the cloud to your system so i can spin this up so it's essentially an implementation time um amri would you like to um shed some light on that matter so the you know that's the number one question that's asked uh you know is how fast can you spin up our data so we the answer you know with all the hype on uh, spinning up servers you know uh the, 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 you know, Storage Guardian can spin it up um, by copying 100 gigs an hour on the network, uh, depending on, uh, on the type of data it is. We can have a, a server up and running within an hour or so. Um, we don't see issues with spinning up servers, but it's really about uh, organizing the team around you to, to access it, the VPN connections, the firewalls, the permissions, the authentication. That seems to be the, the main issue. But um, you know the uh, the validation drill, really the testing, will determine how uh, you know the answer is how fast can you spin it up. Okay. Uh, another question here is, uh, what kind of infrastructure is required for me to start using the service? So we, you know um, the the, the typical. Windows physical server or a uh, a virtual server is required. 
uh, depending on your recovery time objective, your recovery point objective will determine the uh, the backup platform that we go with. Uh, our go-to Veeam has both um, physical and virtual servers, both a um, backup uh, where you copy the data from the repository at a, a low cost from backup, uh, but a longer recovery time versus replication which is an always on technology will determine how fast you can replicate the data. Okay, um, two remaining questions. Uh, first one is, are you guys only doing this on your own servers? Where is, um, or is there, a, can we integrate AWS or other public cloud into your services? So currently we have integrations with public cloud. Uh, you know, we've integrated with um, Azure because uh, we're a Microsoft partner, um, but the same goes with uh, AWS or any other uh, public cloud, uh, you know, because we're the, 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 the DR run book, you know, is independent to any type of hypervisor, any type of cloud. Um, it's a process that we've implemented in place. And so no problem at all. You pick the cloud and we'll uh, run the validation role. All right, perfect. Um, Schedule a demo and we'll demonstrate the integration into Azure, you know, uh, with, which includes uh, your Azure subscriptions and or your AWS subscriptions, no problem at all. Okay. Uh, the last question is, um, how do you guys do on scalability? So is there a limit to bringing up DR in terms of um, in terms of in your servers or in terms of how much data is can be brought up at the same time? The so storage guardian has, uh, you know, no limitations. We've invested heavily on our infrastructure uh, to accommodate uh, hundreds of servers being brought up simultaneously, uh, so no, no limitation. But you know, it, sh it sh should be noted that while disaster recovery as a service has primarily been uh, on the enterprise side, uh, you know, we we brought it uh, you know to the S and B and the the you know the mid market that we um, that we service on the the Veeam platform where there's anywhere between 25 and 50 servers that we're spending up for customers. Okay. Well, guys, once again, thank you so much to come uh, for coming and joining us. Um, and I what have- it's not a lot? There we go. Oh, can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, sir. There you go. Fantastic. So this package you're discussing is not included in the current plan we have now, right? It's if you're a backup and recovery customer, it's always been there. It's always been available. Uh, you just need to start the dialogue with us, uh, you know, and have us publish the the DR run book and explain the tool mm -hmm. on how to create the the, the service boards. Who, who are we dealing do, with? Like, is, this is Chad Holiday at Barry Solutions Group. Um, yes, sir. Does that allow us to do semi or annual testing? How how do you guys allocate that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, the the validation drill can be uh, you know scheduled out semi annual, um, and it could be done over a span of a month. You don't you know there's no set time that you need to do all the servers. You know you don't you can you can just give us a couple of servers and we can spin them up for you whenever you want. And do you guys provide a report back for that that we could provide to the client with that expectation for them? Yes, it built inside the DR run book is the uh, spin up time okay. um, and how long it took you, you know, and uh, any gaps. There's, so there's notes for any gaps you experience. So the next time you run it, we can fix those together with you. Okay, great. And we can share the, uh, the statement of work uh, which is a shared responsibility, um, you know, and, you know, it, it, it creates a working document between the, the cloud, the service providers and the, and, and the business owners on one, uh, on one, uh, you know, uh, report document. 
what's that uh what does that report look like i mean are we look are we talking about something where you're going to provide like the issues that you ran into during the process because typically a dr right it's only as good as the notation of the issues so then next time you have another test you can try to resolve some of those issues and then eventually you know you get solid testing out right yeah maybe aaron you want to bring up the uh the dr planner we can show you how you can take the notes you know we can either do that now on the webinar you know if, if, if aaron you have it handy or we can take it up with you offline chat yeah that's fine yeah you can even send me the send me some information about it. i was just curious about how that looks um you know from a customer's perspective what they're going to be seeing are we going to be seeing the error so we can explain to them and then improve on that process internally yeah, I mean the 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 run book integrates into a, into a Word document, but yeah, and uh, you know, and uh, you know, each customer will have their unique service board. You'll be able to log in and view all of the the incidents from previous tests, previous years per customer. Okay, great. Uh, so we'll, can, can I possibly get your um, email, or or it will be? In I'll, one of I'll the, share it with you, Aaron. Uh, we you okay. know. We, we communicate with chat all the time. No problem at all, chat. Awesome. Okay. Great. Do you want me to thank investor? All right, guys. Once again, thank you for joining. Uh, this this uh, webinar will be posted on our webinars page um, in our storageguardian.com, um, and I will be we will be sending out an email um, with the link to the video. Um, if there's anything that you need, please contact us um, at our, our email um, and have a great rest of your Thursday. Thank you. You do the same. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir.